I'm Alex Michelson. This week, the issue is the race for the U.S. Senate in California. With us in studio, Congresswoman Barbara Lee on the week she officially became a candidate. Then the issue is starting a third party. Former Democrat Andrew Yang, former Republican Christine Todd Whitman here to talk about the expansion of the forward party in California. The issue is starts right now. Broadcasting across California, you're watching The Issue Is. And welcome to The Issue Is. I'm Alex Michelson, and with us here on set for the very first time is the Democratic Congresswoman from Oakland and the newest candidate for U.S. Senate from California, Congresswoman Barbara Lee. Great to see you. Welcome back to The Issue Is. Great to see you also in person. I know. Finally. We, we love seeing you in yeah, person. Uh, so uh, we'll start with the question that I ask candidates whenever they get into a race. Why you? Why are you doing this? Well, why not me? First of all, I have had a history of fighting for what is right. As a progressive black woman, I have brought my lived experiences uh, and turned them into public policy so that I can help lift everyone up who've had these lived experiences here in California. And there's so, ma so many gaps in the Senate that I believe that I can fill uh, based on my experience, my lived experiences, and connecting with voters who share the same issues that I have throughout my life. Of course, one of those gaps in the Senate is the fact that there are no black women in the Senate. You would be the only one in that role. Kamala Harris, of course, used to be in that, in that chamber. Um, we know that your competitors, Katie Porter and Adam Schiff, have both been strong proponents of civil rights over the years. What's the difference for actually having a black woman in there? Well, let me first say, just going back to 1789, when the first uh, House and Senate went into session, since 1789, there have been only two African-American women serving a total of 10 years. That's uh, Vice President Kamala Harris and former Senator Carol Mosley Brown. Mm -hmm. That's uh, 10 years since 1789. So it's very important, and what I think distinguishes me is look at my, first of all, look at my record as a progressive champion and what I have done in the past uh, based on connecting with voters, based on what I know to be right, and based on my fighting for people who have not been seen necessarily. And so I want to take those values and those uh, that ability to get it, the job done to the Senate and make sure that uh, voters understand that I see them mm -hmm. and I'm fighting for them. And let's talk about the, the, the race itself. Um, Katie Porter, Adam Schiff, both Democrats, both in Congress from California, people you've known. What's your dynamic with them like? Well, they're friends. Uh, this is a democracy. Everyone has a right to run and to win. And I think it's important that I connect with the voters so that they get to know me better, so that they know that I was the one who stood up to the president uh, and did not give him the authority to use force. I was the only one right after the horrific events of 9-11. And so I stay, stand my ground. And uh, people know me as somebody who's going to fight for them. Going forward, you know, we're in a precarious situation right now with Ukraine, with China. What would it take for you to authorize force? Well, the point is, I voted against the authorization uh, as it relates to Af Afghanistan and Iraq because it takes away Congress's ability, our constitutional requirement to debate and decide whether or not we're going to authorize the president to use force. That's the issue. We don't know. We'd have to see what the facts are on the ground, and the president would have to come forward and present the pros and cons, and then we would have to make that decision uh, based on the realities of what he presents or she presents to the Congress. When we come back, I want to go deeper into your life story because I think you have one of the most interesting stories of any member of Congress and I think there's a lot we all can learn from that so we're going to get into that and one of the things we've talked about with you on the show is your love for Beyonce which I think is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so we go to break with some Beyonce music oh, and you. we'll uh, be back with more of Congresswoman Barbara Lee right after this. <laughs> like I'm under fire. I think about her example, you know, she paved the way. A year ago here on The Issue Is, we profiled the documentary Barbara Lee Speaking Truth to Power for our Black History Month episode. Well, this year, Barbara Lee is trying to make more black history as the next senator from California. Welcome back to The Issue Is, great to see you. Um, so for a lot of folks, 
you know, they're just sort of getting to know you. Obviously, very well known in the Bay Area, but the rest of the state, I think a new LA Times poll said six out of 10 people don't really know that much about you. So uh, let's talk about your life story. Can you give us sort of the, the brief synopsis of, of some of your background? Well, like many African Americans, uh, my family uh, came from El Paso, Texas. We, I was born and raised in El Paso, Texas, and an immigrant community, actually. Mm -hmm. Moved to L.A. County. I lived in uh, Pacoima and San Fernando. I attended San Fernando uh, Junior High School and San Fernando High School. And uh, I remind people who don't know me that uh, when I was in uh, probably 15 and a half, 16 years old, I wanted to be a cheerleader at San Fernando High School. And there was a selection committee that selected cheerleaders. Well, I didn't look like what they wanted in a cheerleader. So I went to the NAACP. Mm. So they helped me. The NAACP helped me organize. The students went to the administration, said, you've got to stop this. We, this is discriminatory. We've got to allow students to um, elect their cheerleaders. Mm. So I was able to change the rules of the game. And that's the point, changing the systems and institutions that are barriers for people like me. And uh, they changed to election. I tried out in front of the student body. Guess what? I won. I was the first black cheerleader at San Fernando High School. But that same year, other uh, girls of color won also. That is, that's, yeah. that's great. So, and of so course, I'm a Valley girl. And our other senator from California, Alex Padilla, also went to that's San right. Fernando we talk High a lot School. About that, he's a tiger. Go so we could have two <laughs> senators from San Fernando High School. That's a lot for one school. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you know, other parts of your your background are, are really interesting as well. And one thing you've spoke um, eloquently on is the fact that you had an abortion before Roe v. Wade was legal, and that really informs the way you think about that issue, which once again has been front and center for the Senate. I talked about an abortion I had uh, before Roe. Uh, this was uh, when I lived in the Valley. Uh, my mother, we talked about this, why uh, the pros and cons, and just like um, now, it shouldn't be nobody else's business. We just said, okay, we made that decision. It was a personal decision. Uh, but ca abortions were illegal throughout the country. So my mother sent me to a good friend of hers who I knew in El Paso, and she knew a doctor in Juarez. And it was a back alley. I was terrified, mm -hmm. but I was the one that survived. But I was worried that when I left that back alley, I would be arrested because it was illegal. Came back to Texas, worried that they'd arrest me. Come back to California, worried. And that's what's happening now. Women and people are being criminalized mm -hmm. for just making their own personal decisions about their body. So that's why I started talking about it, because uh, I, even though it was hard, but I felt like uh, I had to connect with voters and people and who understood that it's okay that we have to fight back these restrictive laws because uh, we're turning the clock back. And, and another thing you've been a leader on is this issue of domestic violence. Um, you've talked about the fact that you were a domestic violence survivor. Yeah, and it's hard, again, for people to talk about all of these issues. Mm -hmm. And it's been really hard for me as an elected official because they see me, people see me as, no way. So when I was in the California legislature, uh, when the president, uh, Bi then uh, Senator Biden, uh, authored the Violence Against Women Act, each state had to develop their own. And so I led the effort and authored the California's Violence Against Women Act because I know those issues very well and I did a lot of work around domestic violence and still do. And, and so I, I guess a, a part of all of this is when you've lived these experiences, your time as a legislator is different, right? Your approach to it? Yeah, yeah your approach to it is based on these experiences, but also you know you connect with voters by sharing these experiences. But not only sharing and talking about them, but doing the work in public policy to try to make life better so they, other people don't have to go through what you went through. And so you, and I don't like talking about personal matters. It's hard. Mm -hmm. But to connect with people, to, to let them know that you see them, that you're authentic, you hear them, you have to open up and share some of these, but not for your own sake, but to let them know that you're there for them. Right, and, and there's a lot of value in representation uh, as, as well. Um, so on our show, we like to have a little bit of fun in getting to know you. So we play a game called Personal Issues. This is 30 seconds, first thing that comes to mind, sort of, of, of cultural stuff that you think of. Okay, you, re you ready to go? Okay. All right, what is your favorite movie of all time? Black Panther. Oh, very nice. Who's your favorite actor or actress? I'm not going to answer that. Okay. Uh, favorite sports team? 
the Golden State Warriors. All right, very nice. Do you have a favorite Republican? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite way to relax? Listening to music. And what's the best part about being a Californian? Californians. Ah, good answer. Very nice. Uh, and, and to wrap things up as well, we want to, we're honoring Barbara Walters um, by asking some of her all-time favorite interview questions. Uh, so these are the, the first things that come to mind when you hear this as well. All right, here we go. Um, what is your personal motto or philosophy? Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. What do you think is the biggest misconception about you? I was a small business owner, had over 400 employees. A lot of people don't know, I know the business world, the small business world, and the issues around creating jobs, good paying union jobs. What kind of business? Facilities, management, security, administrative support. Oh, very cool. All right, and, and finally, finish this sentence. Congresswoman Barbara Lee is? A fighter for everyone, for justice. And she's also a great dancer, uh, <laughs> which we've seen before. We're gonna, end with some, we're gonna end some music. Uh, this is The Temptations, get ready, because here she comes, get ready for Congresswoman Barbara Lee's <laughs> campaign. Thanks so much for coming thank in. You. It's great to see you in person. I'm sure we'll be talking a lot more as this campaign rolls on. Nice being with you, and thank, thank you very you. much. Back with more of the issue is right after this. right now. You no, know, we gotta reach across the aisle. I think we've reached this point where both parties are not capable of solving our problems. Members of the Forward Party talking about why they are looking for an alternative from the Democratic and Republican approaches. The party now focusing some of its efforts here in California. And to talk about that, we have with us in studios two of the leaders of the Forward Party. Back, our returning champion, one of our all-time favorite guests, is Andrew Yang, who, of course, ran for president as a Democrat in 2020. He is the founder of Forward. And Christine Todd Whitman is with us for the first time. She served as the Republican governor of New Jersey. She was the director of the EPA for President Bush, and she's now co-chair of the Forward Party. Welcome. Good to see both of you. Thanks for Good being here. Be here. All right, Andrew, what is Forward? Forward is a positive, independent political movement that wants to give us real choices in our own communities. Here in California, we know it's essentially a one-party state. Democrats have a super majority. And there are a lot of Californians who don't think things are working, uh, that they don't think that either party, frankly, is going to actually solve the, the problems. And that's why we're here in California. We are launching in tandem with the Common Sense Party of California, cacommonsense.org. We're creating a new political party right here in California. So if you want a real choice, we're here for you. We need to build it and give you an alternative to a Democratic Party that can't solve the problems that are getting worse in your communities. One of the most important things we want to see happen here in California and across the country is to change the way we elect our officials. Because until we do that, until we break the duopoly, the control of the two parties, we're not going to see any changes in the way issues are handled. And so what we're saying is, look, if we can elect people who are chosen through ranked choice voting, open primaries and ranked choice voting, and you have the ability to do that here, I mean, you already have a first step, but we can take it even so further. So right now, right now in California, there's an open primary. Unlike other states where right. it's only a Democratic primary and Republican primary, here everybody's there and it's the top two that go forward. But you right. want to change to make it rank choice. Rank what does that choice. mean for people that have never heard that term? It's essentially instant runoff, but among five candidates, let's say, because that's the other way a lot of states do it. So you take the top five. What it does is it means that, A, the candidates have to speak to everybody, because they, they want to be liked. They want to be at least number two on everybody's list. We have a prime example of that up in Alaska and how it worked, and it worked extremely well. We got this big Senate race now, right? Katie Porter, Adam Schiff, mm -hmm. Barbara Lee all in it. Is there going to be a forward party candidate in that Senate race? 
We're looking to get party recognition by the end of this year, which would allow the forward party to potentially back candidates in the 24 race. Our goal is to get uh, 90 to 100,000 party registrants here in the, in California by October. We're already at 30,000 or so, so we think we're gonna get there. And then there could be a forward party candidate at any race, at any level here in the state. And there are over 500,000 across the country elections opportunities and fully 70 percent of those are uncontested mm. so what we want to say is everybody should have a choice so we're really focused on local races they're just as important in fact they make a lot of the decisions that most directly impact your life and so those are important those are where we want to really concentrate and uh, play of course you know there is so much attention on the national picture as well we got to know you during your run for president it was one of the more fun candidates to ever cover uh, are you going to be running again as a member of the forward party? No, right now we need structural reform. Uh, unfortunately, the, the country is at a point where uh, having a good person in office, which I vastly preferred, and having a not good person in office, um, doesn't actually solve the root problem. I'm dedicated to building a new alternative here in California and around the country, and that's where my energy is. So that sounds like you're not running for president. I want to do everything I can to help this country of ours. We're not in a great place. We're not heading in a, uh, in a positive direction, and that's what I, I want to change. Okay, so that wasn't a no, but may maybe. That's a maybe, right? I mean, okay. Uh, Governor, uh, we do have a new presidential candidate from the Republican Party, woman, mm -hmm. Nikki Haley, just recently announcing. Mm -hmm. What do you make of her run? Well, I think she's opening the pathway for other candidates to come into the race as well. Um, She's an articulate woman who has been held elective office. She's been in a point of office, so she's a credible candidate. It's fair to say I don't think either one of you is going to be supporting Trump 2024. Uh, <laughs> but, but what do you make of, of Biden 2024? Is he too old to be doing this? Uh, I think that Joe should step aside and allow the, there to be a competitive process to determine who the, the nominee is going to be. You're not going to see that in the Democratic Party because there are too many people who are conformists and careerists where they say, look, I might think Joe's too old, but let me just wait for four years. Unfortunately, the country doesn't have that luxury. I think the Democrats are going to step aside for Joe, and I think it's a mistake. And you think that he puts is putting at risk of losing to Trump in the process? or I think that uh, you can do much better than an 82-year-old Joe Biden as your nominee in 2024. Most Americans see that. It's common sense. But you're not going to hear that from the Democratic leadership because they've been told, look, it, it's Joe, just, uh, you know, like, fr frankly, keep your true thoughts to yourself. Because we all know, the American people know, that it's deeply unwise to propose an octogenarian as your party's nominee in 2024. Is there anybody on the Democratic side, including you, that might challenge him? Oh, I, I think you're going to see at least one challenger, uh, you know, like people do reach out to me and, and say, hey, look, <laughs> but uh, but I'll, I'll say there are a whole host of people that should be challenging Joe. Uh, if any of them are seeing this message, look, do the right thing for the country, not your party necessarily. And I think this is actually a much better move for the Democratic Party. I think what Joe is doing is bad for the Democratic Party, but it shows where we are as a country, where politicians 10 times out of 10 will put party over country, and that is not what we need. Forward is about trying to reverse that and putting country over party. I think the Democrats have quite a few attractive candidates. I mean, Gretchen Whitmer is someone, I think, who really could stand up um, and represent the country well. But I think we're going to see it's going to be Joe Biden. And I, I really like what he's done in this. I'm glad he is the president at the moment. But uh, I agree that toll that being the president takes on you and when you get to their perfectly competent 80-year-olds, there's nothing wrong with that, 90-year-olds, and I just was at a party with, for a 100-year-old who has all her marbles. But it, clearly the pressure of that office is such that it's difficult. It's difficult when you reach a certain age. Yeah. It, it's okay to say he was the right candidate in 2020, right. but not in 2024. So who is the right candidate in 2024? I think there should be a competitive process to yeah. determine that. And like uh, the governor said, there, you know, you, you'd have people from all over the country, not mm -hmm. necessarily just in D.C. You know we always like to have fun on this show. And, and Governor, I don't know if you know this, but the last time that he was on, he played basketball here in our studio. Here's a look at that. <laughs> oh, yeah.
Look at that. I mean, that is, that's an impressive jump shot, is it not? I mean, he, he's got some real skills here. Uh, and, and, and he is a monster on the basketball court. And, and so we've had some history here in California recently when it comes to basketball. LeBron James mm -hmm. passing the new Michael goat. Jordan. I'll say it. Do I was a Jordan so? guy. but you, now, you think he's now the GOAT? Uh, Le LeBron has won me over where uh, sustained performance at that level has never been seen before. He's the greatest of all time. Wow. Do you agree with that? Uh, I would go, if I were picking goats, I'd go to a different sport. <laughs> I'd go to football. Okay. And who's the greatest there? Well, who do we, we know who the greatest there is. Yeah, Tom, Tom Brady, Brady. Is, has proven it over and over. Again, and, somebody, this time, he's retired, he should stay retired. Okay. Just like, I, I guess, your advice to Joe Biden. LeBron never retired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and lastly, the big shakeup in the NBA recently, Kevin Durant being traded, Lakers getting new players and everything. Who do you think is the favorite to win the NBA championship right now? I think any team with Kevin Durant on it is the favorite. <laughs> no, yeah. no, 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 until proven you have thoughts on that? I would agree with that one. Okay. You have to. All right. Big, big endorsement for the Phoenix Suns and common sense politics here <laughs> on the issue is. Thank you guys very much. Again, if anybody wants to find out more information or potentially join them, you can go to cacommonsense.org and potentially sign up to help. Well, let's bring some common sense to the state of California. Right. Let's, and in the meantime, we're going to bring some music to the state of California and throw it back to your old campaign pain theme song and a chance to dance. Here is Return of the Mac. Never gets old. <laughs> Search for The Issue Is wherever you stream for extended interviews every week in podcast form. Thanks for watching this week. We end with the Above Los Angeles account flying above Oxnard before this week's crazy storm. We'll see you next week.